Let's talk about treatment principles, tonifying the upright chi and expelling the pathogenic factors. Tonifying the upright chi and expelling pathogenic factors includes three possibilities. First, tonify upright chi, then expel pathogenic factors. First, expel pathogenic factors, then tonify upright chi. Tonify upright chi and expel pathogenic factors simultaneously. First, tonify upright chi, then expel the pathogenic factors. This approach is used when there is a pathogenic factor to be expelled, but the upright chi is too weak to use a reducing method, as this would weaken it further. This situation is, however, rather rare and applies only to exterior patterns. When a very weak and possibly elderly person has been attacked by an exterior pathogenic factor, an upright chi is extremely weak. In this situation, it is not possible to expel the pathogenic factor, as the reducing method might further weaken upright chi. One can therefore first tonify upright chi and then expel the pathogenic factor. For example, if a very weak elderly person with chronic bronchitis has an attack of wind cold, one could tonify chi first and then expel wind cold. This approach, however, is seldom necessary and is not widely applied. It must be noted here that tonifying upright chi alone is not sufficient to expel the pathogenic factor. This approach does not apply to interior conditions, as in these cases, one can tonify the body's chi and expel the pathogenic factor simultaneously. Tonifying the upright chi before expelling pathogenic factors is used in interior and exterior conditions when the patient's chi is very depleted. It is a rarely used strategy. First, expel pathogenic factors, then tonify upright chi. This approach is suitable when there is a pathogenic factor and upright chi is weak, but eliminating pathogenic factor is called for due to the urgency or severity of the clinical manifestations. This approach is also used because tonifying upright chi alone can, in certain cases, also stimulate the pathogenic factor. This strategy is widely used in clinical practice, both in exterior and interior conditions. In fact, when there is a pathogenic factor and the body's chi is weak, this is the standard procedure to adopt, apart from a few rare cases already mentioned. It is important to stress that if the diagnosis and identification of patterns is correct and elimination of pathogenic factors is called for, eliminating pathogenic factors will not weaken the patient. We can expel the pathogenic factor first using the reducing method with acupuncture. Once the pathogenic factor is expelled and the excess type clinical manifestations have gone, only then can we tonify upright chi. This approach is applicable in both exterior and interior conditions, but particularly in exterior ones. When tonifying the upright chi, we should pay attention that there is no pathogenic factor left. In exterior patterns, this is generally the approach adopted. For example, if a patient previously suffering from deficiency of chi is attacked by exterior wind heat and has symptoms of fever, headaches, light sweating, aversion to cold, body aches, floating rapid pulse, correct approach should be to expel wind heat and release the exterior by reducing Li4, Li11, or TB5. When the exterior symptoms have totally gone, no fever, no body aches, no aversion to cold, no floating pulse. Only then can one tonify the upright chi. Tonifying the upright chi before the wind heat has been expelled can somehow stimulate the wind heat too and lead to a worsening of the condition. For example, the fever might rise. It is also important to pay attention to this point even when a fairly long time has elapsed after an exterior attack. In certain cases, if the exterior pathogenic factor is not expelled properly, it can penetrate the interior and lurk there for a long time after the initial attack. To continue with the previous example of attack wind heat, the person would find it difficult to recover from the attack experience great tiredness and become prone to strange recurrent sore throats. There would be, this would be due to some remaining heat lurking in the interior. In Chinese, this is called residual pathogenic factor. In these cases, it is important to be able to recognize it and clear the remaining heat before tonifying the upright chi, as normally one would tend to tonify the upright chi straight away since the person would complain of great tiredness. Symptoms and signs of residual pathogenic factor after an exterior attack would be tiredness, feeling of heat, 
Recurrent sore throats, red tongue with a thin yellow coating in the area between the tip and the center, the lung area, and a slightly rapid pulse. In this case, we could use points to clear interior heat, such as lung 5, LI11, or 214. Thank you for your attention.